The Book of Jubilees, Chapter 29 And it came to pass, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Laban went to shear his sheep, for they were distant from him a three days' journey. And Jacob saw that Laban was going to shear his sheep. And Jacob called Leah and Rachel, and spake kindly unto them that they should come with him to the land of Canaan. For he told them how he had seen everything in a dream, even all that he had spoken unto him, that he should return to his father's house. And they said, To every place whither thou goest will we go with thee. And Jacob blessed the Most High of Isaac his father, and the Most High of Abraham his father's father. And he arose, and mounted his wives and his children, and took all his possessions, and crossed the river, and came to the land of Gilead. And Jacob hid his intention from Laban, and told him not. And in the seventh year of the fourth week, Jacob turned towards Gilead in the first month of the twenty-first thereof. And Laban pursued after him, and overtook Jacob in the mountain of Gilead in the third month of the thirteenth thereof. And the Most High did not suffer him to injure Jacob, for he appeared to him in a dream by night. And Laban spoke to Jacob. And on the fifteenth of those days, Jacob made a feast for Laban and for all who came with him. And Jacob swore to Laban that day, and Laban also to Jacob, that neither should cross the mountain of Gilead to the other with evil purpose. And he made there a heap for the witness. Wherefore, the name of that place is called the heap of witness after this heap. But before they used to call the land of Gilead, the land of the Rephim, for it was the land of the Rephim, and the Rephim were born their giants, whose height was ten, nine, eight down to seven cubits. And their habitation was from the land of the children of Ammon to Mount Hermon. And the seats of their kingdom were Karnaim and Ashtaroth and Edri and Mishir and beyond. And the Most High destroyed them because of the evil of their deeds. For they were very malignant and the Amorites dwelt in their stead, wicked and sinful. And there is no people today which has wrought so the full all their sins, and they have no longer length of life on the earth. And Jacob sent away Laban, and he departed into Mesopotamia, the land of the east. And Jacob returned to the land of Gilead, and he passed over the Habak in the ninth month on the eleventh thereof. And on that day Esau his brother came to him, and he was reconciled to him, and departed from him unto the land of Seir. But Jacob dwelt in tents. And in the first year of the fifth week, in this jubilee, he crossed the Jordan and dwelt beyond the Jordan. And he pastured his sheep from the sea of the heap unto Bethshan, and unto Dothan, and unto the forest of Akrabim. And he sent to his father Isaac of all his substance, clothing, and food, and meat, and drink, and milk, and butter, and cheese, and some dates of the valley. And to his mother Rebekah also four times a year, between the times of the months, between plowing and reaping, and between autumn and the rain season, and between winter and spring, to the tower of Abraham. For Isaac had returned from the well of the oath, and gone up to the tower of his father Abraham, and he dwelt there apart from his son Esau. For in the days when Jacob went to Mesopotamia, Esau took to himself a wife, Mahalith, the daughter of Ishmael. And he gathered together all the flocks of his father and his wives and went up and dwelt on Mount Seir and left Isaac, his father, at the well of the oath alone. And Isaac went up from the well of the oath and dwelt in the tower of Abraham, his father, on the mountains of Hebron and thither. Jacob sent all that he did send to his father and to his mother from time to time, all they needed. And they blessed Jacob with all their heart and with all their soul. All praise to the power of the Son of Man, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, I am that I am. This was a powerful chapter dealing with Jacob trying to escape Laban, his father-in-law, 
you know what I'm saying, by any means, and taking his family and just getting up out of there. But Laban just not, he just did not want to let Jacob go. And this sounds so similar to Pharaoh when Moses told Pharaoh to let his people go. And Pharaoh just did not want to let Israel go. I mean, what's wrong with these people, bro? It's like, these people are not your people. But at the same time, you don't want to let them go because you sense and you feel the blessings that come from being around these people. But it's kind of like these are their blessings, not yours. So once these people leave, those curses come right back to you. So it's like even though the people being around you is a temporary relief for the curses. You have to eventually let them go, Esau. You have to eventually let us go because them curse is going to haunt you. Whether we're around you or not, I mean, it is what it is. And with that being said, all praise to the power of the Son of Man, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, I am that I am. And for him sending his only begotten Son, the Son of Man, to finally come and save the lost sheep of the house of Israel in our trying times, which is right now, a.k.a. spiritual Jacob's trouble. Israel, keep your head up, keep your faith strong, and shalom.